No, that's not how ChatGPT works. It's all wrong. Today, we dedicated eh, about 37 minutes to telling you the telltale signs of when someone who's talking about ChatGPT, large language models, generative AI, has no clue what they're talking about. So we're going to do the very quick five-ish minute recap of today's show about, no, that's not how ChatGPT works. All right. My name is Jordan Wilson. This is a quick AI in five, but Everyday AI is a daily live stream podcast and free daily newsletter helping everyday people learn and leverage generative AI. So let's give you a very quick recap of what we talked about today. And here's why we had this episode, because people are wrong about ChatGPT. Uh, they think of it as some copywriting tool, but it's actually a business operating system. And ChatGPT is more so this than right now, Google Gemini, uh, Microsoft Copilot, uh, and Anthropic Claw, just because of its third party, you know, your GPTs, we used to have plugins, RIP. Uh, but you know, you can literally run your entire business inside ChatGPT if you understand exactly what you're doing. Uh, a, a little background, if you don't know, our team's been using GPTs, the GPT technology since 2020. And we noticed there's a ton of just bad advice coming from experts. So wanted to kind of go down uh, point by point. And these are the things, if you see these things from someone, or if someone's telling you these things, that just means they have no clue what they're talking about and you should avoid their advice at all costs. All right. So if someone says, look at this response, chat GPT is no good. Nope. That's not how chat GPT works. So a lot of times people share screenshots and they're like, oh, look at how bad ChatGPT did. Usually that just means they don't understand large language models and they don't know that ChatGPT is not deterministic. It is generative. Also, uh, if you start um, you, you know, with a 1.8 trillion parameter large language model and you think you can put in one input and get one output, that's not how, that's a search engine, a deterministic a uh, piece, piece of software. Generative AI is going to give you something different every time. But if you start from scratch, just put in a prompt with no other training or tuning, you're going to get bad outputs. So here's an example that we went over in the show. Uh, you know, someone, I saw this post on social media. Someone tried to, you know, use chat GPT as kind of a Nike slogan writer. So I want you to think right now, I'm going to give you the answers here in a second. Which one of these three is the best tagline, ready? Uh, for going with Caitlin Clark, a Nike ad, and I'll give you the actual end results. So breaking records and making hoops history, A. B, you break it, you own it. Or C, legends don't chase records, they set them. This is obviously, you know, it's open for interpretation, but I think there's, you know, one pretty good, another one that's okay, and then one that's not good. All right, so this is the example of, of the, you know, what I saw on social media. And this is not, you know, just, calling out one person because I've seen this hundreds of times. This is just a recent example. So if you just go into ChatGPT, give it no other information and just say, write a headline for an ad featuring Iowa basketball player, Caitlin Clark. She broke the record for moist points ever scored by an NCAA woman in basketball. Be clever. ChatGPT is going to come back with something like breaking records and making hoops history. Not very good. So if you just share that screenshot on social media and say, ChatGPT is not good. AI is not good. Our jobs are safe. No, nope, that just means you don't understand how large language models work. All right. So uh, again, a 1.8 tri trillion parameter large language model uh, is, is it's not easy to work with. You have to understand it. You have to do it the right way in zero shot prompting or just going in and giving no examples, no back and forth, no iteration. For the most part, you're always going to get a poor result. It's not one input, one output like a search engine. You have to work with it. You have to give shots or examples back and forth, training, uh, knowledge sharing, uh, retention, quizzing, improvement. It's an iterative process. Prompting the proper way with Prompt Engineering 101, uh, which is what we teach with Prime Prompt Polish, our free a guide to prompting large language models. That's what we teach. So here's, I did the exact same thing uh, inside of ChatGPT, but instead of just clicking new chat and you know writing like three sentences, this is what I did. So I took it through our prime prompt polish process, 4,500 words, right? 6,000 tokens. This is actually what I did. And I'll show you one of the actual results that I got, but this is the process you need to go through. It's iterative. You have to teach, you have to actually refine a large language model, 1.8 trillion parameters is too many. You have to spend time teaching it what's good and what's not, all right? So then here's the actual results. Uh, and, and what I was shocked with, we asked our live audience which one was best. And overwhelmingly, people said C, which was the version that I trained 
in chat GPT through prime prompt polish, right? Uh, the Nike ad, the actual Nike ad copy was you break it, you own it. Uh, the kind of zero shot quick, uh, example was breaking records and making hoops history. But by far, uh, our live audience, there was, I don't know, 25 or so people that voted, but overwhelmingly it got five or six times more votes was the proper, uh, me using chat GPT the proper way with prime prompt polish, which is legends don't chase records. They set them. So that is a result I got when I went through this process. This is how you use chat GPT. You do not use chat GPT like this. You will get bad outputs every single time. All right, let's go over some more kind of things to look out for. If someone says chat GPT is never out of date because of Bing, that's not how chat GPT works. All right, Bing can actually read URLs. It relies on SEO, which can be very finicky, and it can actually bring you in uh, outdated info that's even more outdated than the April 2023 knowledge cutoff date for a GPT-4. Another one. Try these 25 prompts to 10X your workflow or anyone sharing copy and paste prompts. That's not how ChatGPT works uh, or large language models. Copy and paste prompts literally do not work. That's not how it works, y'all. Like uh, the whole point, and you can go look at benchmarking for different models, uh, prompt engineering 101, the more iterations, the more shots, the more examples, the more training that you provide a large language model, the better the output's going to be. So uh, a simple copy and paste prompt, I don't care how good it is, that's what we teach in our free training. We show you why it doesn't work like that. All right, so that's not how it works. All right, next, paste in your writing style and ChatGPT will write like you. Nope, not how ChatGPT works. Unless you are the most, which is fine, unless you are the most vanilla, plain, uh, bland writer, doing this and giving ChatGPT just examples, you know, three examples, five examples, 10 examples of your writing or building, uploading it into a, a GPT, it's not how ChatGPT works. It doesn't work like that. You have to turn and you have to first understand tokenization because ChatGPT technically doesn't understand your words. It converts everything to tokens. It thinks in tokens and then it just converts them. All right. If you actually wanted to go through the process of turning, uh, you, you know, your, uh, copywriting and being and having chat GPT or something to replicate it, you have to actually turn unstructured data into structured data. You have to turn the art of copywriting into a science of rules to follow. That's actually what we do with our pattern recognition framework. You got to actually understand how a large language model thinks and you have to talk to it and instruct it accordingly. Last but not least, if someone says the free version of chat GPT is good enough, nope, that's not how chat GPT works. The free version is like a landline telephone and the paid version of ChatGPT Plus using GPT-4 Turbo with GPTs and uh, Browse with Bing and Dolly and uh, data, uh, data analysis, right? That's like having the newest smartphone. Two completely different things. You can't get a lot done with a landline. You can get a lot done with the newest smartphone. I hope that was helpful. A very quick breakdown of, nope, that's not how ChatGPT works. If this was helpful, Go watch the whole show, but go to youreverydayai.com, sign up for the free daily newsletter where we break down and we normally do an AI in five like this every single day. I hope this is helpful. We'll see you back for more Everyday AI. Thanks, y'all.